Hey, welcome back, you guys. This is Danita, your host for the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. What a great topic today is we're going to go into the four tips to manifest your dream life, whether that's your body or your bank account. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. Join us because we're making it possible for busy women to sculpt and tone in just 15 minutes a day. It's your time to celebrate you, unleash your empowered self, and step back into your confidence. You can visit our store, bootybands.com, for the best female fitness products out there and subscribe so you get notifications when every episode drops. Today, we're going to be bringing on a manifestation of money coach. Her name is Marissa Nicole. Let's go ahead and get started. Woohoo. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. It sounds like you've really used manifestation um, to not only help you with money in your life, but it sounds like to also get you with health and fitness, would you say? Yeah, definitely. It's kind of all about self-love, thinking that you're worthy, that you're worthy of having the body you desire and that you're worthy of having the money you desire. They both really go hand in hand. I was always told that I was overweight or my friends' boyfriends would say, Marissa, you are so pretty. You have such a nice face. If only you had the body of this girl, then would you be hot or worth it or get more attention or do whatever. So I was constantly receiving comments like this and it was very confusing because like I said, on one end of the spectrum, I was being told you're strong, you're smart, you're beautiful, you're powerful, you're amazing, but uh, you just kind of weigh too much to actually get the benefit of that. So it wasn't aligning. And so I always thought that my worth was wrapped up in my weight. If I'm overweight, then that would mean that I wasn't worthy. So it's about breaking down and realizing that you're worthy, regardless of what you weigh, regardless of what your body is, whether if that's, you want to lose weight or if you want to gain weight, we get to see that collectively we're all struggling with the same issue. It might present in different ways for different people, definitely, but you know, at the core of it, it's all about loving yourself. That'll get you to the self-worth and then that'll get you to the acceptance of your desires. Why are you a manifestation coach? What brought you to this point in your life? When I found manifestation, it took me from a place where I didn't feel powerful and made me realize that I was powerful. A really nice example is with a coworker or a friend or a family member. If you think, okay, they're, she's always in a bad mood. Every time I'm with her, she, you know, nags me and I can't get a straight answer from her. If that's what you think, that's what you're going to get. So I tried this with a woman who I wasn't getting along with that well. And I said, no, she's so nice. She smiles. She's warm. She's genuine and all of this. And the next time I spoke with her, She was exactly that. So seeing these little attraction points then gives you confidence to make bigger attraction points. Some listeners that are on right now are going to go, you know, this manifestation sounds very woo-woo. Definitely. I get a lot of the woo-woo and this is really just touching the surface when it comes to woo-woo that I work with, but you can try it out for yourself and see experiment. So I'll give four tips later, but there's pretty easy ways to just try it. I feel like if you're already happy and you have all the abundance in your life and you've got the perfect body and you've got this dream, everything, then whatever. I think you could actually skip this podcast and go to the next one, but this is for somebody that's, um, looking to achieve more success, abundance, or their goals or their health, whatever it is they're missing on their life, being able to attract it and manifest it. So I feel like when you're in a low place and you've tried so hard to get that one thing and you find yourself just constantly without it, 
what a great way to try something different, which is what Marissa is bringing to the podcast today. So, so let's go ahead and go into these four tips about manifestation. What would you say is the um, first tip that can really help us get into our dream life, whether that body or that bank account? Yeah. So the first step is identifying what you desire. Start, you want to come from like you said, a good energy, like you want to be excited. You want to be in a nice headspace. You want to see what you really desire, because if you come from a place of lack or desperation, then you're definitely going to be receiving the resistance when it comes oh. to your manifestations. Okay. So, so immediately I'm, I'm asking the question, but what if we're coming from lack and desperation? I guess that, how would you change that to, uh, not be lack and desperation? not being lack and desperation, you have to really get aware of what's holding you back, what your limiting beliefs are. So if that's where you need to start, if you've been stuck in this lack and desperation, frantic energy, what you're going to want to do is how I started was journaling about my relationship to money. And when I started doing that stuff started coming up that was seemingly unrelated, but it turns out it is related. And what I mean by that is a lot of stuff about my childhood being overweight that would show up when I was journaling about money, but I didn't question it. I just wrote down whatever was coming to me. And then when I was reviewing it, I was able to pick out themes. Okay. I don't feel worthy. So it's no surprise that my body image issues are tied to other aspects in my life. It's a lot of inner work and it's really connecting with yourself and being aware of what's going on within you. So those of you on the call, go ahead and grab your journals. Let's go ahead and do this with each other. Write down what that is, whether that's money, your body, dreams, whatever. We're kind of focusing on either body or money on this call, both. <laughs> let's kill two birds with one stone, right? Um, okay, so let's go ahead and hear number two. Are you ready? Yes. So we talked about it a little bit before. So the first part, finding your desire. It's fun. It's light. It's exciting. Um limiting beliefs, that is where we get a lot of insight on where we've been conditioned. Human design gives a lot of insight on that as well. And it can even, it doesn't show you where you're automatically conditioned, but it shows you where you're most likely to be conditioned. And it can even narrow it down a little further. Um, like I said, really journaling and finding how you're feeling because it could be conflicting. You might think consciously, I'm confident, I'm happy, I got it going on, I believe in myself. And then journaling and starting to bring that unconscious mind forward is when you might realize, oh wait, there is a little voice in the back of my head where I don't believe in myself, where I don't think I'm worth it, where I don't think that I deserve to have that body or amount of money that I desire. And so getting rid of that little voice saying the negativity and working on flipping it to a more positive statement, a more positive idea, then we're going to make those big leaps and the progresses. And you're really going to see your manifestations come through. It's a lot of being kind to yourself and compassionate. So like I said, this is really applicable to every aspect of your life. Okay. So let's hear how you did it. Cause I know that you did it. So, um, you were journaling one day and you were starting to see your relationship with money or your body, and it was, um, not feeling worthy of it. So how did you kind of walk us through step two? What did you, what did you do and how did you realize it? And, and yeah, walk us through. Yeah, I decided to really dive deep, tapped into more of the feminine energy, my own intuition, and did what I felt called to do. And one of those practices was really working on ancestral healing, because a lot of times the limiting beliefs we can feel, they might not necessarily be ours. 
So you can feel, like I said, you can feel good and then realize you have this limiting belief that's in opposition of it. And be confused because that limiting belief, it doesn't feel like me. It doesn't feel like it's mine, but I'm still carrying it. Got it. Okay. So you were journaling one day and, um, what came up for you was like, was there like a phrase or something that you were like, Ooh, I'm not worthy. Or I feel like I'm not worthy. Oh, perhaps because people, what they were saying to you when you were younger, like, Oh, you have such a pretty face, but yet you don't have the body to go with it. Right. And so then you created this other people's belief of you, you sucked it into yourself and said, okay, well then I'm not worthy of the benefits of et cetera, because I only have part of my, I've only got part of myself. I only have a pretty face, right? So you're, you're kind of taking in this type of energy from other people. Would you say that's kind of where it came from? Yeah. So it kind of all ties together because I definitely noticed the conflicting statements uh, I was getting while journaling, you know, being told I'm pretty and all of that and smart, confident, all of the nice things that I've been consistently told my whole life while also being consistently told you need to lose weight. If only you were skinnier, then X, Y, Z would happen. Then you would get the attention. And so that I, I could see instances in my life where I would act out trying to get attention in ways that were not beneficial to me, not beneficial to anyone else, but I was trying to get that attention because I thought I couldn't get it because I wasn't skinny. So then it, you know, kind of takes you down a path where you're not necessarily being true to yourself. And so then how does not feeling worthy, you're having these conflicting beliefs, how does that stop you from not getting your body or your abundance that you're trying to achieve? So it can show up in a lot of different ways. Uh, what I think is one of the most common when it comes to body image, especially I can speak, you know, on being overweight is not knowing when enough is enough. And that being applied to food, using food as a comfort as a safety and to replace satisfaction. So a lot of times with emotional intelligence and processing food and sexuality are linked. So you could see that either showing up with overeating or being promiscuous or doing something sexual that you necessarily don't want to do. So either way you're overcompensating for something that you're missing because you don't feel worthy. And then you feel bad. Uh, I can't believe I just had three pieces of pizza. Well, might as well have another three because now I hate myself and I want to punish myself by eating even more food. And it's, it's a cycle that just continues. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. I like that overcompensating. So those that are listening right now, this was, this was a really, really great one. So let's go ahead and just walk through these steps again. So first step is identify what you desire. Step number two was really understanding and kind of being aware of what those limiting beliefs are and how we can become aware of them. Um, Marissa here taught us about how you can journal, right? And you can start to see what conflicting beliefs are coming up. And knowing overcompensating, think about like what's coming up, what seems to be in a cycle. She even mentioned a cycle, what seems to be cycling over and over again. And being aware of that is obviously the first step, because what you're doing is you're making your conscious mind now aware of the subconscious, what it's doing, because those loops and those patterns is actually the subconscious. So very fascinating. Thanks for taking us through. And we got two more steps, guys. So stay with us here. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into number three. Number three is giving the universe options. It's not worrying about the how it's not worrying about how will I get this money? How could I lose all of this weight? How can I get to this size? How can I become more muscular? When you get caught up in the, how it limits the ways you can receive. I was mentioning earlier, the phrase open to new opportunities. This is one of my favorite affirmations personally. So What I do is I set an intention, whether that be 
to get a new position at work, whether that be to drop a certain amount of weight or show up a way, at a certain way in the gym. And then I say, I'm open to new opportunities. However it happens, it happens. And I don't worry about how it will happen. So if you're worried about the how you, if you wanted a new job, you might be applying to 30 different jobs, updating your LinkedIn, getting notifications about new jobs, constantly checking. That's a lot of frantic energy and it's going to create resistance from what you really want. If you want to lose weight, you might be going to the gym every day. I need to do an hour of cardio in the morning and I need to do this another workout again at night. And I have to restrict my calories so much. It's a lot of frantic energy and in a state like that, it just complicates things. It doesn't let the flow happen naturally on my weight loss journey. There was a point I was living in a space and it was horrible. It had a cockroach infestation in the kitchen, in the dishwasher. So naturally we did a lot of takeout and I gained a lot of weight and it was horrible. I was in a horrible mental space. So I was drinking so much, so much. And I was like, this is not healthy. I need to cut it out. So I went two weeks without drinking and I lost zero pounds because mentally I was still so frustrated and so aggravated and just holding on to this. I hate my life. I hate everything. I hate my body. I hate where I'm at that nothing changed. And then right now I'm in a spot where, you know, I'm not actively drinking every day and I'm, I've definitely restricted myself right now um, for other reasons, but even if I have a few drinks, it's fine. I don't gain weight. If I'm in a good mood, I go, yeah, I'll have a drink because I'm feeling good. I'm flowing. So just being in that flow, that's, what's going to give you the options. Let's go into this. This is, this is really cool. So number three is not about the how it's really being open to new opportunities to stay in that flow and find that really what you desire can come in a way that you did not think. And so interesting how you told us a story about how your job that you disliked and you were, you know, when you're in that frantic energy to hurry up and find a new job. But what's interesting is your answer came, it was the same job, but a different department. And so interesting how you didn't see that before, but then obviously we know hindsight 2020, right? Those mistakes or those bad days or those moments that if we're not really aware and open to those new opportunities, we don't see that. And then what's interesting, you mentioned about your body goals, about how you wanted to lose this 50 pounds, but you didn't know that it was going to be through, like you mentioned, all these restrictions, you ended up going into a powerlifting. And so did you ever think it was going to be powerlifting? That got you rid of this 50 pounds? No. And I didn't even really know what powerlifting was. I I did literally stumble into it. I saw someone deadlifting and I asked, Hey, can I try it out? They said, sure. I went over and they go, okay, you just picked up over 200 pounds. And I go, all right, that was kind of easy. Let's see what happens. Then I started taking more authority in my personal training sessions and focusing on those areas because I felt naturally confident in them. And so those easy wins, especially in the beginning, build momentum, and then you can take even more action from there. Yeah, it's awesome. So not about the how and just really seeing how things end up flowing to you in those little mysterious ways. So love it. Thank you for step three. I think that was such a great one and being open to new opportunities. And you know, when you say that, like, I want everyone to say that right now to themselves, I am open to new opportunities. Doesn't that feel so freeing? Doesn't that feel so relaxing? There's something really cool about that. And so I appreciate you bringing that affirmation to us today that we can start applying into our own lives because how powerful that is. So If you have not written that down in your journal, listeners, please write that one down. I'm open to new opportunities. Wow. What a huge takeaway on this podcast so far. Awesome. Marissa, let's go ahead and go into number four. Okay. So the last step is really building on 
step three, not worrying about the how, it's really being open to the receiving portion. So step three, you're not worrying about how you're gonna receive it. And step four, you are staying in that flow and being open to receiving. So you wanna get excited. You know, you wanna do things that are fun. You wanna stay in a good headspace. If you like yoga, then do that. You don't have to run for an hour on the treadmill to lose weight. There's not only one option to lose weight because if you think you have to do something, if you've been told you're supposed to do something, then you might harbor that resistance. Like I hate running on the treadmill. I refuse to run on the treadmill. I'm just scared that I'm going to fall off one, but I, I don't like cardio in powerlifting. There's kind of a joke that anything over three reps is cardio. And a lot of times that's how I feel. So I'll keep it at higher intensity and lower volume, but it's about exploring what you like. If you like karate, if you like yoga, if you like just going on walks with your dog, not even in the gym, you know, just once again, about connecting to yourself. And then that allows the receiving of your desire. Ooh, that's so true. Because I mean, you'll hear from some people, they'll be like, I lost 50 pounds doing powerlifting. And for me, I'd be like, powerlifting is the last thing I'd ever want to do. But what's interesting is there's as much successful ways as there are individual people in the world. And if we had to only do a certain thing for exercise, but what's so great is there's yoga, there's dancing, there's karate. Like you said, there's walking with your dog. There's literally, you don't have to work out. You could just do it by diet alone. You know, it's just so interesting how there really are thousands of different ways to really get into shape with your body and how, yeah, if you're feeling that resistance and that force and you're like, oh, I just hate this. How interesting, how unique we really are and to find our unique. I love that one. Thank you for sharing number four. What else? Is there anything else you want to talk about that one? Yeah, a little bit. So tying it back into human design that really, I said, you know, can dive super deep. And so it will give you a lot of insight on what necessarily it feels for you when you're in a fun, excited place. So there's four themes based on different types, and those are peace, satisfaction, success, and surprise. So my personal signature theme when I'm in alignment is peace. I don't want to have to be worrying or stressed about something like my financial goals are, I want to have enough money. I don't have to worry about anything. I can do whatever I want and just relax and be at peace. And we're told in society that we have to do things a certain way. A lot of the systems are based on specific types, which are the majority of the world. And what works best for them works horribly for me. Coming to that and acknowledging that just because it's what everyone's doing and everyone says you have to do this with anything, whether it's working a nine to five job. Like if you don't have a nine to five job and you are still serving, you're looked down on it. Even if you don't want to make a lot of money, if you don't care about material, the other people, well, why don't you want to make more money? Or if you're fine with your body, however it is, you will be told different ways in what you're supposed to do. I mean, you see this a lot with promoting your business on social media you have to niche down, have all these hashtags, do this, do that. And sure, there's definitely some masculine structure within that, that you could pick pieces of and follow, but you don't have to use the cookie cutter model of success that is presented to you. Yeah. Because again, that goes back to like number, I guess, three and four, you're right. Because it's not about the how being able to open yourself to new opportunities rather than just putting yourself in this cookie cutter, you can blossom off and find ways of success just by being in that flow. It's so interesting. Hmm. I've been conditioned to go, 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 go. That's the majority of society is go, go, go. And my whole family is go, go, go. The majority of my friends are go, go, go. I'm lucky my fiance is not one of those people. So at least I don't get that from him, but I have to know 
once again, when enough is enough, I have to know when I need to rest. And a lot of times I've been taught to kind of push through it, finish the project now, complete it now, make sure you go to the gym, even when you're dead tired to do that 30 minutes on the stairs, when in reality, it would be more beneficial for me to go home and go to bed and quieting my mind and following that with my mind and my body is a learning curve, but it's all about learning and the journey. So true. Yeah, you know, it's interesting too how, how um, I've, I've looked at that all the different aspects of life, if you were to bucket them, okay? So like one, financial, two, your health, three- uh, Relationships. Relationships, okay, yeah, thank you. Um, if you start to bucket them, what you, what you can do is you can go, okay, which one have I reached success in? And whatever that one is, you'll start to find that your ways of success are very metaphoric to like the answers that you're trying to find is in that one that you've already succeeded in. I'll give you an example. I found this to be so interesting lately. So the other day I was like, oh my gosh, I just feel like I'm doing everything in business. I just feel like I'm, I'm hitting all the points. I'm doing everything. Like I'm like, I could list out all the things I'm doing. Correct. Right. Well, I feel like I've already succeeded. The bucket I've really succeeded in is my health and fitness. Like, I feel like I am so confident in that field. Like I have the body that I want and I'm extremely healthy. Okay. So if somebody came to me and said, Danita, I'm doing all these things. I'm doing the eating. I'm doing the workout. I'm doing all the things. How long do I have to keep doing this to reach my success? And that was my little light that answered my own question. I go, you just keep in the journey. You stay in patience and you continue to keep doing those things and the reward will be on its way. And I was like, oh my gosh, what realization that I had that when you actually find yourself in these little buckets, go to something that you've already succeeded in and just ask yourself the freaking question that you're the master you're already at. Well, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and go uh, read nice little recap. So step number one is identify what you desire. Really, what are your goals? Nail those down. Because if you don't, oh, this is such a good one. I've heard this before. If you don't nail down your goals, it's basically like getting into the Uber car and he's asking you where you want to go. And you say anywhere except for McDonald's. So he's going to go, okay, I'll go anywhere except for McDonald's. So it's basically how your life is. If you don't really have something nailed down of where you want to go, you're really like on this like crazy path in life, right? Super interesting. Number two is getting rid of those limiting beliefs. Your thoughts are truly your destination. And I'm such a believer in that. And I know that this isn't woo-woo because I've done a lot of research on the mind. And these listeners already know the reticular activating system is literally your filter that you are pulling in. You are programming your mind to what you want this life to be. And if you're programming your mind that you are worthless, that you are not deserving of it, then you're right. You are going to not be deserving and you're not going to get it. And so we have to change that mindset to start really empowering ourselves to be able to get those things we want. So I love step number two. Step number three, you said it's not about the how, but it's really being more open to new opportunities. And that is so like vastly freeing. I can't even tell you how open I feel just on this call. It's so great. And number four is uh, just being open to receiving, being excited for the new possibilities that can come your way. Well, Marissa, it was really phenomenal meeting you. I could absolutely tell that you are so skilled and confident in this area. If somebody on this call is like, you know what? I want to learn more. I want to follow her. Where can they go to find you? Probably by the time this episode's out, I will have launched my podcast, which is called Big Design Energy. And it's all about just embodying that confidence, having that vibe that where you're just living your life so true to yourself that people take note. It's obvious. They can see it. They go, she's doing something right. I don't know what it is, but whatever she's doing, she's doing great. So in there, we'll go a lot more, you know, about human design, spirituality in detail. I love it. So you guys heard it. Big design energy, her new podcast that's coming out. You're going to be phenomenal. Next. I'm so excited for that. And it's really about supporting you as well. And that is going to be great. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and click the description guys. You can go ahead and click down on those links to make it easy for you. And uh, just uh, really appreciate you, Marissa, for jumping on. I'm excited to um, have you do that profile for me so I can really find out my uniqueness and I'll be on your podcast. So I'm excited. So check us out at the big design energy. And uh, thanks again, Marissa. Appreciate you. Thank you. Awesome.
Awesome, wrapping up, we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind, your body, and your life. Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.